welcome to Canton This Month. I'm your host, Diane Baker. During our show, we'll bring you a variety of special reports from throughout the community as well as local news and more. Canton This Month is produced by Canton Community Television and the Canton Municipal Government. Our show this month begins with a visit to the Canton Historical Museum, then we'll check out the Afghan Club at the Summit on the Park, and we'll finish it out with a visit to Wild Birds Unlimited. All this and more when we return to Canton This Month. Meet first responders, including Canton's police officers, paramedics, firefighters, and more at Canton's Community Connection Day on June 29th from 10 a.m. to noon at Canton's Fire Station 1, located on Heritage Park Road next to the Administration Building. This event helps connect individuals in the special needs community with resources that are available to them in our community and surrounding ones. Participants can enjoy a hands-on public safety display, get answers to all of their questions, and learn about some important local programs and resources. This program is presented in partnership with Canton Public Safety and Building Bridges Therapy Center. For more information or questions about this event, contact Cheryl Steck at cheryl.steck at canton-mi.org. Now let's turn to the news. We're counting down to Canton's 28th Annual Liberty Fest, which will be held Thursday, June 13th through Saturday, June 15th on the grounds of Heritage Park. This year's festival will feature three fun-filled days of great entertainment, exciting rides, a car and truck show, a spectacular fireworks display, and much, much more. Lace up your sneakers and run, walk, or stroll the Canton Liberty Run 5K, 10K, and one-mile courses through neighborhood streets and the Lower Rouge Trail. A portion of your entry fee will help fund recreation and trail improvements in Canton. To register and see costs for each race, visit cantonlibertyrun.com. Entry includes an event t-shirt and finisher's medals for all distances. This year's theme is stars, stripes, and superheroes. So come decked out in red, white, and blue apparel or as your favorite superhero and join us on June 15th. For more information on Liberty Fest events and attractions, please visit cantonlibertyfest.com or call 394-5460. Can Leisure Services and Old Glory Flags have joined forces to host Yoga in the Park to benefit the Wounded Warrior Project with Dan Nevins on Saturday, June 15th in Canton's Heritage Park Amphitheater. This special fundraiser is scheduled to begin at 10 a.m. and will feature an inspirational yoga session with Dan Nevins, who has traveled the globe teaching and sharing the healing powers of yoga and purposeful thought. Participants of all ages and abilities can either choose to take part in the yoga session or just listen and observe Nevin's inspirational talk. Registration for this event is $10 and proceeds will go to benefit the Wounded Warrior Project. Register online at cantonfund.org or in person the day of the event. The Summit on the Park's personal care pantry is now open to the public during regular business hours to assist community members who are struggling to meet some important basic needs. If you know someone or experiencing a need, you can visit the pantry by asking the Summit Member Services staff at the front desk or make arrangements by emailing our Member Services staff at summitmemberservices at canton-mi.org. If you'd like to help us keep our pantry stocked, donations are always welcome. A donation box is now located in the Summit Lobby where personal care items are being collected, including cleaning supplies, deodorant, shampoo and conditioner, soap, tissue, toilet paper, toothbrushes, and so much more. For additional information, visit summitonthepark.org. Canton Leisure Services is seeking public input for the development of a small pocket park in Northeast Canton. Pocket parks are community parks that are generally under a half acre in size. This new park will be located on Coppernick Road, just east of I-275. Residents are invited to provide feedback on the design of the park at several public input sessions. 
the collected input will help determine budgeting priorities and recommendations for both short and long-term improvements, ensuring that this pocket park will serve Canton's needs now and into the future. Canton residents are encouraged to provide input via the following ways. Complete an online survey at cantonfund.org from May 6th through 19th. Attend an open house at the Township Administration Building on Thursday, May 16th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Or attend an open house at the Summit on the Park on Friday, May 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you have any questions, please call 394-5360. And we'll be right back with more Canton This Month. I'm Community Relations Officer Patty Esselink of the Canton Police Department. We continue to receive complaints of drivers not stopping for school bus red lights. I want to take this opportunity to remind you when the lights turn red on the school bus that means stop. As you're driving down the road and the bus initiates the yellow flashing lights, those lights tell you to slow down. When the lights turn red and the stop signs go out, that means you must stop in all directions on a non-divided highway. If the highway is divided, the vehicles behind the bus must stop on those red flashing lights. Remember, it's not just you that we are worried about. We're also worried about all of the children who are exiting and entering those buses. So remember, stop on those red lights. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip back in time at the Canton Historical Museum. The society started in the 1980s when a group of, uh, of the farmers in the area decided they needed to do something to preserve the history of Canton. And that's basically how it got started. This building came available uh, through the school system. It was a school until 1955, one room schoolhouse. After that it was not used. So the uh, society said, well, let us take it over. And the township said, okay. So the Rotary Club of Canton was one of the first groups to come in and refurbish the school. Um, and from then on, uh, we've used it as a museum um, until this day. It's always been a museum at one time. We also had our archives in here, which are now over at the uh, at Preservation Park in the Travis House. Um, but as of the past few years, this has strictly been a museum and for displays. We need to keep history alive. And the way to do it is by preserving homes, buildings, and using those buildings to display what it was like in Canton over the years. And by keeping this school Act alive and active, we feel that uh, we are serving the community by providing the information to the community about what went on in Canton, how Canton has developed over the years. We have a committee that works on displays and the director of the museum, director came up with the idea of let's go back and 
talk about the teachers that were in this school, that taught in this school. And this play is about two teachers that taught in this school until it closed. Marie Cox and Celia Gordon. These were the two teachers and last, in fact, Cecilia Gordon was the last teacher to teach in this school uh, in, in 1955 when they shut the school down at that point and did away with all the one-room schoolhouses in Canton. This school would handle maybe up to 40 kids and, get, and they would maybe in, in range of maybe 5 to 17. Uh, you'd have girls on one side, boys on the other um, with one teacher. And the idea would be that the older students would teach the younger students uh, with the teacher overseeing the class. Uh, not like today at all. We try to have a display every six months for the uh, community to come in and look. It'll be about Canton. It'll probably be on the history of Canton, some part of history of Canton and then that'll be there for probably six months and then we'll change it out again to bring something else in. Just to continually inform the community of what Canton is, has been. So it's a continuing change, always trying to come up with something that would be interesting to the community. The Canton Farmer's Market regular outdoor season kicks off on Sunday, May 12th with a Mother's Day celebration. Special activities include live music, a kids craft, giveaways for moms, and a full lineup of market vendors. Chicken Coop Chicken and Waffles food truck will also be on site selling tasty lunch options. Stop in any time between 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and find fresh seasonal vegetables, baked goods, handcrafted artisan items, and more. This outdoor market is open rain or shine every Sunday except July 7th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Preservation Park. For additional information, please visit cantonfun.org. Take your fitness to the parks this summer. Join us at various Canton Park locations to participate in free fitness classes. These free outdoor fitness classes will be held from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Free children's activities will also be provided to make it a family event. Get your Canton Passport to park stamped each class visit to receive one entry in a drawing for a chance to win a Summit on the Park three-month family membership. For dates, locations, and class type, visit summitonthepark.org under the Health and Wellness section and Outdoor Fitness. In Canton, we'll once again showcase arts and culture during the 9th Annual Canton Acts of Culture Week, which will run May 11th through 19th. This exciting week-long celebration presented by the Canton Commission for Culture, Arts, and Heritage will feature a variety of cultural offerings available at various locations throughout Canton. Community members are encouraged to enjoy the wide variety of events. Find the calendar of events at cantonfun.org. Now let's check out the Afghan Club at the Summit on the Park. My name is Kay McAuliffe and I at one time was the leader of this group which started 10 years ago. We started out because people had been asking at the summit here to knit and crochet classes of which there were none. We've continued on making all kinds of things from afghans, hats, mittens, tea cozies, placemats, we've made pumpkins, we've made cupcakes, you name it, we've made it. I knew Kay from years ago in an, a different group and we, she kind of went out on her own and started the Afghan Club and the Dishcloth Club. Oh, we were small. We were over in the senior room and there was like maybe eight to ten of us. It was basically all on hearsay and we also were in the Canton Observer. We grew and grew and finally we, we were moved to either the lunch room or to the banquet room. We were expanding because of the things that we had already made. So we decided to make Afghans for the Veterans Hospital. 
the things that we make are sent to the uh, VA hospital in, in Ann Arbor and to a veterans haven in Wayne. And it makes, it makes you feel good that you're doing something for somebody that maybe couldn't do it for themselves. But what's really important to me also is when uh, a veteran itself sends us a letter and mm -hmm. appreciate what we did for him. Right. So a lot of what we do is uh, the charity work. That's a big focus. We go to the Humane Society, take um, mats for the animals. We did mittens for field school for two years. We have a baby shower here for Mott's Children's Hospital and we just keep coming up with different ideas on different things. Each person brings something to the table. It's, it's, it's also a good um, socialization for people that might not have relatives in the area or people that they can see all the time. When we get old, we get lonely, and here, if we need something, we can always call on them. They're always gonna be there for us, to pray for us and help us. As I was starting to get depressed because of my vision, I'm legally blind, and I could no longer drive. So I was pretty much stuck in the house. And it helped me get out there and I've learned so much more about what's going on in the summit and what's going on around town. So it was really a godsend for me. I look forward to having something different to do each Tuesday, being, seeing other pe people's faces, making friends with other people. It was very enjoyable to see people come in and those that had not done any knitting and crochet, learned to do something, and they were so excited, you know, about they could make an afghan for themselves, uh, they could make a tea posy for a teapot, I mean, you know, just anything to learn to do a, a craft. Kay uh, always challenges us to do different things and to learn new stitches. That's what's so wonderful, we keep learning. You can always teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> We learn from each other. Right, uh-huh. And something to look forward to, seeing your friends. and You accomplish something while you're visiting. The people in this group do a lot of good things. And it's just a, a pleasure to be in it. If there's anybody out there that's interested in joining our group, we'd love to have them. This is where my heart started, and this is where my heart wants to stay. Dog owners and their pets are encouraged to attend Bark in the Park, which is set to take place on Sunday, May 19th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Canton Dog Park. Participants of all ages, along with their four-legged friends, can enjoy live entertainment, purchase merchandise, and receive free giveaways from local pet supply and service vendors. Both members of the dog park and non-members are encouraged to let their dogs experience this off-leash dog park during this free event. This special event is designed to give pet owners the opportunity to learn about the Canton Dog Park, meet other pet owners, and give dogs the opportunity to become more socialized. Please note, non-dog park members must show proof of up-to-date vaccinations for rabies and DHLPP signed by an accredited veterinarian. No pre-registration is required. For additional information, visit cantonfun.org. Join us as Canton hits the trails at the Lower Rouge Trailhead, located at Michigan Avenue and Morton Taylor Road, as part of National Trails Day. This American Hiking Society event will be held on Saturday, June 1st, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Scheduled activities include self-guided hiking along the beautiful Rouge River, educational displays and presentations by a naturalist, recycling information, trail biking and running details, and a make-it-yourself trail mix station. New this year, enjoy a live exotic animal presentation by Animal Magic. This is a free family and pet friendly event to raise awareness of the Lower Rouge Trail system. For additional information, call 394-5460. Are you looking for a great way to learn the game of golf? Get Golf Ready is designed to teach everything you'll need to play golf in just a few lessons. 
Each session will focus on the various golf skills you will use while playing this great game. In addition to learning the basics, you'll be guided onto the golf course to put your skills into action in a casual, friendly setting. Tuesday and Thursday sessions will begin in May. Call Pheasant Run Golf Club at 697-6460 to sign up today. It's that time to shape up for summer with a great Summit Membership Special. From now through May 31st, Canton residents can purchase a three-month individual membership for just $107. The non-resident special rate is $137 for a three-month individual membership. Offer cannot be combined with any others and is not valid on prior purchases. Now's the perfect time to get started on the path to better health and fitness with a Summit on the Park membership. For more information, contact Membership Services at 394-5460. And we'll be right back with more Canton This Month. Meet first responders including Canton's police officers, paramedics, firefighters, and more at Canton's Community Connection Day on June 29th from 10 a.m. to noon at Canton's Fire Station 1 located on Heritage Park Road next to the Administration Building. This event helps connect individuals in the special needs community with resources that are available to them in our community and surrounding ones. Participants can enjoy a hands-on public safety display, get answers to all of their questions, and learn about some important local programs and resources. This program is presented in partnership with Canton Public Safety and Building Bridges Therapy Center. For more information or questions about this event, contact Cheryl Steck at cheryl.steck at canton-mi.org. I'm Officer Patty Esselink with the Canton Police Department. School is in full swing. The signs are out and the lights are flashing, reminding us to reduce our speeds and be patient. Students belong in the school zone. Your distractions do not. Let's limit our distractions and let's keep our students safe. Slow down and be patient. I'm Community Relations Officer Patty Esselink of the Canton Police Department. We continue to receive complaints of drivers not stopping for school bus red lights. I want to take this opportunity to remind you when the lights turn red on the school bus that means stop. As you're driving down the road and the bus initiates the yellow flashing lights, those lights tell you to slow down. When the lights turn red and the stop signs go out, that means you must stop in all directions on a non-divided highway. If the highway is divided, the vehicles behind the bus must stop on those red flashing lights. Remember, it's not just you that we are worried about. We're also worried about all of the children who are exiting and entering those buses. So remember, stop on those red lights. Canton is asking residents to be vigilant in the recycling efforts by keeping contamination out of recycling carts. Contamination occurs when non-recyclables are placed in the carts, which can include anything from food waste to plastic bags. Not adhering to the recycling guidelines, along with the poor materials markets, is having a negative impact on recycling nationwide. Residents should only place clean, acceptable materials in their recycling cart. Failure to comply with Canton's guidelines will impact our program going forward through increased rates, restricted materials lists, temporary recycling bans, or a combination of any of these. To view a list of what is and is not accepted in your recycling cart, visit canton-mi.org. Canton Sports Center is offering a number of leisure opportunities for youth and adults for spring and summer. Please visit csc.canton-mi.org for details on sand volleyball, rookie baseball, lacrosse, baseball, and basketball camps, and so much more. For more information or to register, visit cantonfund.org or call 483-5600. Canton's annual River Day will be held on Saturday, May 18th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Preservation Park. This will be the first year Canton has held River Day at Preservation Park. The park has a lot of drainage that leads directly to the Rouge River. River Day is a celebration of the rivers in the Southeast Michigan region. Every year, hundreds of volunteers make a difference by helping to preserve the quality of Canton's creeks and streams. River Day takes place rain or shine, and volunteers of all ages, including residents, students, and scout troops, are encouraged to participate. 
Volunteers are asked to meet at Preservation Park at 8 a.m. On-site activities will include wildflower and grass seeding in the buffer zone to help with quality in the Rouge River, historical farming demonstrations, and birdhouse building. All volunteers will receive a light breakfast and lunch. Riverday shirts will be handed out on a first-come, first-served basis. For more information on Riverday or to pre-register for the event, call 394-5150. Don't go away, we'll be back with more Canton This Month. Are you 55 or older? Are you looking to add more steps to your day? Then check out the walking club at Club 55 inside the summit on the park. You'll gain access to our indoor track with a monthly incentive program designed to keep you moving. Participants are able to walk during summit hours without having to purchase a summit membership. They only have to purchase an annual Striders membership for $5 for residents and $8 for non-residents which will allow them to walk at a discounted price of $1 for residents and $3 for non-residents each time you visit. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at Wild Birds Unlimited. Wild Birds is a backyard bird feeding store. So it's designed to help bring people and nature together in their own yard. So we have all the supplies you need to attract all the various birds that uh, are in this area. I like the idea of it. I like the concept of it. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a business and uh, entity that people like. You know, when they come in here, they're pretty much happy people. Um, people enjoy this kind of thing, so it's a, it's a very relaxing, very easy thing to do. It's not a hard sell. We have bird feeders, we have bird baths, we have bird food. We have everything you need to set up your yard to make yourself a little refuge in your own yard to bring nature into it. And we have some other gifts and things like that, different things like that, but our main focus is backyard bird feeding. See, we're on Ford Road, which is 41816 Ford Road between Lily and Haggerty on the north side. Uh, it's the Willow Creek Shopping Center. If you're interested in backyard bird feeding, there's no real skill involved. You don't have to say you don't know anything about birds and know what birds like. We'll just guide you along and provide you the best uh, application for your yard, your area, and make it as simple as possible to enjoy backyard birds. We hope you've enjoyed our show. On behalf of the team in Canton this month, I'm Diane Baker, and I'll see you in Canton.